Good to go. Yeah, should be good to go. All right. Good evening. It's a little after 5:30. Sorry for the slight delay. We had a little bit of technical difficulties. We're here for a public hearing topic. It's the proposed annexation, annexation of Nettles Parcel, the owner city of Clemson of a parcel of land consisting of approximately 66 acres situated in the unincorporated area of Anderson County has petitioned for annexation into the city. The proposed zoning is R20, single family residential district. The property is contiguous with existing city limits Thanks. and is intended to be developed over time as an additional park and recreational area. This session will include an overview of the proposed annexation presented by staff prior to the opportunity for public input. Links to the copies of related documents can be found online at the city calendar at www.cityofclemson.org. And we also had the opportunity beforehand, questions and comments on this matter could have been submitted to the Planning and Codes Administration Department prior to this session. So I will turn it over to Todd Stedman to give us a overview of the proposed annexation. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I will be brief. Um, this uh, land is an assemblage of 11 parcels that total 66 acres. Uh, it's largely forested with some modest topo changes uh, and with a very small being located in a floodplain. Uh, it's accessed by vehicle via Nettles Road. It also abuts Porter Road. And uh, the city is, or the request on the table is R20 designation. And it's intended to be developed over time as um, a park and recreation facility for the city. Uh, the property is bordered to the west by the city of Clemson Park, uh, to the north by vacant land, and to the east by a mix of vacant land and single-family homes, and to the south, single-family homes located in unincorporated Anderson County. Uh, the comprehensive plan identifies this area of potential annexation, but it doesn't really specify any particular use. Uh, both the strategic plan and comp plan mention that act annexation of land is critical to the city fulfilling some of their stated objectives and the comp plan calls for increasing the overall amount of park space for the city. Uh, an inventory of existing outside services, they've got fire, EMS, police and power, but they don't have any utilities. They'd be requesting all of those. Um, you know, we would need all those if they were to be annexed in. Um, and the timetable for that was Pretty much fire and police and EMS would be immediate, uh, but the, um, and sanitation could be immediate, but um, sanitary sewer and water and stormwater would be developed as the park is developed. Um, as far as cost of services, that the upfront cost of the city would uh, be none, and that the annual costs are kind of unknown because we don't really know. Uh, how the use will uh, pan out. The same with revenues that uh, we're not sure of the um, uh, how the fee structure will will take place. There shouldn't be any hospitality or accommodation or real estate or business taxes since the city land. Uh, but we did have a total estimated annual revenue of five thousand dollars for uh, park fees. Um, the question came up, has there been a discussion of developing the land as a PD? There has not. Uh, with the intended use of this land to expand City Park, um, there didn't seem to be any intention of doing commercial or mixed use development or residential development on the land. Uh, impact on traffic, that the uh, increased recreational use would likely result in more traffic. Uh, the only public entrance in and out of the site currently is the entrance at the Nettle Road Park entrance. Um, and so the development of the site would be logically expected to increase traffic and wait times at that intersection. Um, but the overall impact is, is expected to be negligible except during uh, certain peak times. Uh, Stormwater looked at it, didn't see any real stormwater impacts. Um, and that uh, the school system, uh, this shouldn't add anybody to any of our school systems because there's no residential um, projected for the site. 
um, burdens and benefits of annexations. There are no burdens evident. The benefit would be increasing our park space. Uh, incentives suggested or requested, none have been requested or suggested. And then uh, the, as far as staff opinion and suitability, uh, that staff supports the proposed annexation is R20. Uh, I'll talk a little bit about the uh, OR in one, one second. Um, and even though there will be increased traffic at the intersection of Nettles Road and the entrance to Nettles Park, and even though there are some existing single family homes that will be impacted by the development and proposed use of the land, uh, and then, and even though it's uncertain if tax and fee revenues will cover the cost of development and maintenance of the land, uh, the overall benefits to the city by expanding its parks um, seemed to be um, that was the consensus staff opinion. So with that, um, uh, one of the questions that came up last time we discussed this was, could this be o OR? And the answer is yes, it certainly could be. Um, it, the zoning designation is completely up to um, city council to decide what they want. The reason that, that staff recommended R20, it is, it is the most restrictive zoning designation we had. And that, um, that OR uh, also allows um, hotels, motels, restaurants, bars, amusement parks, uh, conference centers, convenience stores, um, other commercial uses and things like that, which our understanding, but it was just our understanding, was that none of those were really being considered, and um, and but they would all be allowed if it was OR, where none of that would be allowed if it was R20. So that was the rationale we used by recommending R20. Um, it's also the default zoning designation when a, a parcel zone is, is zoned into the city, so it requires no further rezoning, and um, and so. That was our rationale, and that's the report. And I'd be happy to answer any questions. Any questions from anybody on city council at this time? So, so Todd, would would the R twenty not allow housing to be built there? Then it does. Um, R twenty allows housing. Um, of course, with the city being the owner of the property, and that y'all would be the ones who decide the only way housing could be developed there was if if the city built houses there okay but would we now so the other uses you said for the or the golf mm -hmm. courses the bars whatever would those have to be approved by council or those are automatic they don't need approval well uh, I, let me try to answer that the best i can um since it's the city's land that anything that happened on it would have to be approved by council is your is your property and so nothing's going to happen there unless you all decide it's what you want to happen um if you wanted to build a bar or a hotel it's already a permitted use you would not have to change the zoning um but uh but nothing can happen on the property unless council says this is what we want to do it's your land so, so in either case, it allows something to be built out there that right now certainly we don't want. Um, and in both cases, it require our approval, whether it's a bar or a, a housing development or houses, whatever that are out there, right? And in either case, it's just a matter of which, which, of, which of the things, but they both really require the same process in order to use it for something other than what I think tonight, at least, our intent is to use it for, which is open park space, right? right. There, there, there is no, Fran, there is no designation that is just open park space. Right. Um, that the OR comes with all these other allowed uses. Uh, and, uh, and the same with R20, it comes with its specific set of allowed uses, and uh, both of which allow what I understand um, the, the Parks and Rec Department have in mind for this property. And so you so, can work with yeah, the- So maybe we need to, to consider at some point an OR that truly is limited only to park use. So we have that if, if we need it and avoid sort of the, 
sort of what we're going through now, right? I don't, I don't know what that would be called, but it would be just open space, not any kind of development. So that's not for tonight. I know it's not related to this, but that, that might be a consideration if you want to think about working up a different zoning that allows or that restricts it just to parks and, and solely outdoor space, but just something to think about. Okay. Any other comments from city council? If not, we, we have the line open. It's 864-653-9886. Again, 864-653-9886. If you have, we have a call. Nope. Yes. Two people, two attendees that are utilizing Zoom. Um, you can raise your hand if you wish to make a public comment. Um, we can get you back on record for a public comment. Great. Thank you, Lowell. So hopefully everybody heard that. If you are on Zoom, that you can raise your hand and we'll make sure you're getting recognized during this public comment, public hearing session. Okay. Andy, you have the floor. I was just going to let everybody know that Wednesday night at six o'clock, Kimberly Horn is going to be having a virtual public hearing to present their uh, two concepts for the master development of the park. Everyone's welcome to attend. You Good information. Thank you. Website. <clears throat> Thank you. Again, the number is 864-653-9886. It is 545 right now. If we do not have any calls, we will close this session at 555. So that'll make sure I want to give people plenty of time to call in. But, um, we're at 546 to be exact right now. So 864-653-9886. Or obviously through Zoom. Yes. I'm just going to show you the yes. participant. Oh, I saw that. Yep. Yep. Sophia. Yep. You see the hand up there, right there. All right. Thank you. No, that's great, Lol. I appreciate it. Yeah. You know, over the last year, I don't really want to know how many Zoom calls. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes, sir. Robert, this, this is Fran. Is this going to be the same yep. link as for the 630 meeting, or we're going to get a different link for the 630 meeting? Uh, okay, repeat that again, Fran. Sorry. Is this link the active one for the 630 meeting, or are we going to get a second email with a new link for the 630 meeting? I believe this is the only link, but I'll verify that with Lowell. I'm going to uh, basically just mute the call and pause the recording, and you can stay on the link. Good question. Robert, I, I couldn't hear it. Lowell's not coming across very loud. I didn't hear what he said. So what Lowell said, yeah, Fran, what Lowell said, he's going to mute the calls whenever we close public, public hearing session. And you can stay on this link when okay. actually our city council meeting starts at 630. So. All right. Thanks, Robert. Thanks, Lowell.
Yep, sorry about that. My mic was muted. Yes. Well, you don't do Fran, any of these kind of things, so that happens. <laughs> Fran and Catherine, if any time you do not hear very clearly through the microphones, please let us know as soon as possible. That would help. So that'd be great. Like you just did. Thank you. What do you say, Robert? <laughs> I'm kidding. I knew you were going to say that. Only kidding. <laughs> I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> There's always one in the crowd. Again, the number is One more opportunity for any calls, 864-653-9886. Again, 653-9886. We will close this public hearing within the next two minutes unless we hear of any calls.
All right, without any calls, I will officially close this public hearing. Um, of course, anytime you have any information, you can contact us at City Council, but we'll go officially close this public hearing at, at this time. We will reconvene at 6.30 for our regular council meeting. Thank you very much.